One of the things I love about Hitchcock's early movies are the playfulness and inventiveness he brings to them. And nowhere is that more apparent than his use of special effects, using techniques which were very much in their infancy back then. I'm going to talk to a modern special effects supervisor, Mike Tucker, to tell me exactly how Hitchcock did what he did back then. Hello, Mike. Hello there. Nice to meet you. I'm indeed. hoping you're a Hitchcock fan. Oh, indeed, indeed. I'm good for that. Um, okay, so tell me about some of the early techniques that he used, because uh, you, you, I think you're normally aware of them when they're happening, which maybe wasn't the intention, but I guess it was because they were, they were new. Back then, they don't have the option of post-production the way that we take it for granted these days. You know, there was no green screens, there's no blue screens. So if you're doing something that's a, a big set, um, or you want to put people into a set, you have to do it in camera. Uh, and it means using an awful lot of mirrors. Uh, and this is a classic mirror technique called the Schuften process. The Schuften. And what they're doing here is you place the mirror at 45 degrees to the camera. So you're reflecting your model. So the camera, what, the camera is seeing the mirror, which is seeing that. But what you've done is in a predetermined position, you've scraped the silvering off the back of the mirror ah. so that what you're left with is just the clear glass. I see, so that's got an angle at the bottom because the doorway's supposedly Be at an angle. That's right. So you've actually made it harder for yourself. Yeah. So we have the model there. So that we're model use. set, which yeah. is then being reflected in this mirror. And it's seen through to a background which you can put live action in. So this set we can do anything we want with. And yes. obviously I guess the advantage will be a location wise you're doing it in the studio, as you said, but also it would cost you a fortune. If you replace the model with a projection screen and and project onto that screen previously shot live action, yeah. you can now combine actors into stuff so that like had a, been shot before. A crowd scene, if you wanted that, or Indeed. an action sequence. Or an action sequence that you wanted to put uh, an actor in because it was too dangerous to have him there on the day. Yes. I don't know whether Hitchcock, like many great directors, was actually that bothered about the safety of his actors, frankly. <laughs> I think maybe it was just a cost thing. How kind of widely used was it at the time when Hitchcock was using it? I know he used it in blackmail very early in the history of cinema. It's 1929, uh, and he used it particularly, I think, there's a sequence when he went into the British Museum. And as I understand right. it, yeah, he didn't have permission to shoot in the British Museum. Yes. So he faked it with this kind of thing. That's right. And again, it's the big statue that's been reflected into that shot. How surprising would this have been for an audience to know this was going on, do you think, back then? Because I think now, even if we don't know exactly how it's done, we're very, very aware of special effects. I think it's, it's the magician's art back then. People must have been going into cinemas and coming out and going, how on earth did they get that shot? And I think that's lovely. So we've got the mirror in place in exactly the right spot. Yep. Uh, there's the model. So I'm going to ask you to go around so okay. I can see it, Mike. So you go there. This could be your big break in movies, Mike. You know that, don't you? I know that. Yeah, okay, stop there. And, and then in we go. you in. No, what? I, di I didn't say go no. yet. Get... Back we go. Actors. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay. That isn't a cue, by the way. Okay. And action. And then come, come towards me. You're very, very sad. And the sad. effect will probably be blown now by you're, that Now you're too big, yeah. and you're still behind the door. So that's it. So there's, so a, there's an optimum only position. Really worked there. I see. There's yeah. an optimum position where the scale of the actor yeah. is now in scale proportionally with the model. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So the statue looks bigger than you, but you walk forward, of course, we're losing that shot. That's incredible. So yeah. you really see how it's working. Here. Well, next time I go on holiday, I might take this kind of stuff with me, just so I can put the kids in a different yeah, location. Exactly. Like when or just don't take them on holiday with me. Take the photographs at home, lock them in the room, crack the window, so there's air, and go on my own. Okay, you, you may go now. And if I were you, I'd start working on your um, award acceptance speech, because that was... <laughs> the body of work he left behind. If you could only make one more picture, what would it be about? I think it would be about murder, mayhem, violence, sex, and... Uh, a joke or two. The drama everyone's talking about reaches its finale. Will there be closure for Broadchurch? Find out tomorrow night at 9 here on ITV.